what will a hospital do for sciatic pain? The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body, and it's a mixed nerve, meaning it contains both sensory and motor fibers. And this nerve actually originates from the lower back or the lumbar spine, and extends down the butt buttocks, down into your leg, and into your foot. And the course is normally in the back side of your body, meaning the back side of your, of your leg and the thigh and into your lower foot. And so what does the sciatic nerve do? do? Well, the sciatic nerve deals with motor function, meaning leg, foot, and muscle movement. And it also deals with sensory function, meaning feeling of sensation down from, uh, from the leg up into the brain and body. So therefore, when you affect the sciatic nerve, it can cause many different types of symptoms. So sciatica is not necessarily one type of problem, meaning if you have pain down the leg or pain in the low back, it's sciatica. But sciatica, unfortunately, is a set of symptoms and it's not necessarily a condition itself. Sciatica refers to pain that's being felt anywhere along the sciatic nerve due to most likely cause being compression or impingement in the lumbar spine is the most common area, but there is possibility of it being compressed outside of that area. This can also not just be limited to pain itself. It can be numbness, it can be tingling, it can be shock-like, it can be weakness. It can have many different symptoms because the sciatica has a sensory and a motor component like I mentioned. So how painful can sciatica become and how bad is it for each and every patient? Well, the answer is very case specific, meaning sciatic pain isn't just one level of pain. Some patients have very mild low back pain and they actually occur in sciatica. They have maybe mild, very mild low back or leg or, or foot pain or maybe some numbness into their leg, but it's very mild, very intermittent. It's not very, not very debilitating and they actually, it's sciatica, but they go on their way because they can function and, they, and it resolves itself or it gets better in, in, initially in that initial mild or intermittent type of condition. Unfortunately, sciatica can also progress and become very chronic and become very debilitating. And this is where things become very, very severe. It can be so debilitating that it can affect movement, standing, sitting, where patients can't even get up, they can't move, and they're locked into like a specific position because anything they move out of that position, they cause a, a shock-like or pain going down into their low back and leg. And the pain can evolve completely into the low back back could be located in the low back or it can radiate down into the lower extremity and it's typically on one side and the most common side of course being the left side of the body. Now patients when they have this severe chronic debilitating type of pain where they can't move very often that this will make them go to a go into the ER or hospital and they promise a, this hospital visit because of this intense flare-up and and typically normally unless the underlining cause is actually addressed, normally the most common approach is going to be just pain relief in the short term just to get the patient out of what kind of pain they're having. And this is most often done with either pain medications um, or sometimes they will be using some kind of epidural injections or steroid injections done right into the nerve to try to decrease the inflammation. Sometimes in the hospital, they may do a scan, they may do a CT scan or MRI scan to find out where, what area of the lumbar spine is actually compressing the nerve and try to do injections in that area, but normally it's pain management when you walk into the hospital with a flare-up of sciatic pain. They're normally not addressing the causation at this point. They're not looking at your, at your spine, at alignment, at any kind of any kind of disc degeneration or anything that could be possibly causing the curve, the sciatica. They're normally dealing with pain relief. Now, in some cases, there could be more than just a, an alignment or disc degeneration. In some cases, there may be something abnormal in the spine, like there could be a tumor or something like that bulging into the sciatic nerve causing pain. And in those cases, there may be some more treatment involved in, the, in a hospital, in an ER visit or a hospital stay. But most of the time, they're dealing with you symptomatically, trying to reduce the pain levels, and then sending you off or referring you off to an orthopedic surgeon to see what's actually causing um, this sciatic pain that you're feeling. And the most common cause tends to be age-related spinal degeneration. Now, a lot of times they'll say, they'll use the word natural age-related spinal degeneration. I don't agree with that term because that's saying that your spine should degenerate abnormally 
to lead to sciatic pain, and that's normal for people, and that is not normal. Spinal degeneration should be very symmetrical, it should be very slow, and it should not be asymmetrical, meaning causing where spinal degeneration occurs. It should not be causing more pressure on one nerve versus another nerve. This is normally related because of abnormal alignment. It's kind of like an unaligned car. If a car, it is normal for your tires to wear, but they wear very symmetrically and evenly if your car is in proper alignment. However, if your car is out of normal alignment, one side will degenerate faster than the other. This accelerated degeneration leads to these asymmetrical uh, alignment of the spine, and this will cause bone spurs and degeneration to occur more on one side versus the other, which can lead to sciatic nerve compression. This sciatic nerve compression causes now causes what you feel in this sciatic pain. Um, the discs get evolved as well as when the spine's out of alignment. It causes these discs to bulge asymmetrically and herniate asymmetrically, and it also makes them much more prone to injuries, specifically compressive forces, meaning if you have a misalignment, you you have some degeneration going on, you have disc uh, bulging occurring, and you get compression forces on top of these things, it can lead to compression of those nerves and spinal cord, which can lead to sciatic nerve pain, which is ultimately what we call lumbar spinal stenosis. Things like scoliosis can be a predisposed factor to developing, uh, to developing sciatic type pain. Things like spondylolisthesis can be, again, a predisposed factor to developing um, sciatic pain. Any type of uh, congenital deformity of the lumbar spine, pelvis, and sacrum can also be some predisposed factors in terms of what could have could be developing uh, sciatic type pain. So when we look at sciatica and you go into the hospital with this flare up, normally you're just gonna be treated for your pain. Ultimately, you're gonna have to search to find what's actually leading or causing your sciatic type pain. And more than likely, it's gonna be alignment related to the position and condition of your lumbar spine. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, not only do we look at the, the, the alignment and look at what's going on in terms of what could be leading to the sciatic type of pain, but we also are looking for the underlying cause. Finding the cause and restoring the, and removing the cause or we're trying to restore the alignment, which is typically uh, one, the number one cause of sciatic type pain, is the most effective, most sustainable type of treatment that's gonna provide the most long-lasting relief and help for you and your body. So that's what we recommend is that have your spine completely evaluated and examine for alignment and address any alignment issues, not just treat with the dentist, treat the symptom or the pain with either medications or injections. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.